Let's dive into some crypto because crypto bros are starting to bail. Data shows around $3 billion worth of coins withdrawn in 24 hours with $1.14 billion taken out during the business day. Binance had to briefly halt withdrawals with their USDC stablecoin as a flood of investors swapped out the coin. CJ, the CEO of Binance, stated that this is all just business as usual. It's normal to test the stress system. But do you think there's a greater bank run story with liquidity involved? You know, I just had this visual of Kevin Bacon in Animal House, and I say this all the time at the end of the movie where he's, you know, the ROTC guy and he's standing in the middle of the sidewalk going, remain calm, remain yes. calm, and everybody runs him over at the end. That's, I mean, literally, that's what just flashed through my mind. This is a, I don't know if it's a watershed moment for crypto. I don't know if you can call it that yet. Mark made a great point about CME, and when you get, uh, just was that, I think that was Monday, Mark was talking about CME being the big winner here down the road, and I think that is going to be the case. As for the exchanges, man, this is going to get to the point where everybody's just going to slowly lose trust, and yeah, a long, drawn-out run is what I think you could see happen. I'm watching Coinbase right now, teetering at that $38, $39 level. Um, and it's been right around that $40 level all through this whole entire event. I'm wondering what happens. And obviously, it's not going to happen to Coinbase itself. But these exchanges, it, it seems like their product, Coinbase's product, maybe gets sucked right away or, or right out of the system. This is just, it's a weird spot. I'm glad I didn't get too far into crypto because um, these guys are real smart, too. I want to yeah, know where all the money is. Does, CJ, does, I'm curious. Do you see Coinbase going lower? What do you see in Coinbase? Yeah. I, th I think Coinbase right now, because it has been, as I said, it's been teetering at this $40 level. And I'm not sure what the volume profile says, but my guess is 40 is really strong. Bollinger Bands have been tightening up on this thing. It's getting ready to get strangled into a move. Um, mm -hmm. And that 40 just looks like, and that's the best way to put it, it's getting strangled into a move. It's going to either move higher and volume starting to pick up on it right now. So the more the rumor mill churns on uh, on the crypto scene in general, I think the more pressure you put on that 40 level. We could have some sort of announcement. Let's look at the other side where somebody signals an all clear and all mm -hmm. of a sudden, instead of going down to, you know, 35 bucks, this thing goes up to 60 real quick. But yeah, I think that's you know probably a dream scenario right now. That's Drink a bunch of NyQuil and you might see that happen. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you uh, brought up Coin because we're going to get to the volume profiles by request. And I'll do a quick feature on Coin right now, guys. Uh, looking at Coin, this one made a volume profile breakdown. Volume. Hey, where's my where's my magic marker? Volume profile breakdown. We did a retest of the volume profile. Got rejected by the original breakdown. I uh, keep we keep testing the value area low about 40, 45, 18. Uh, I, I see I see coin going down to 30, guys. I see coin going down to 30, and that's using volume profile and Fibonacci. Now on the flip side, Matt is looking at Neo. What's up, Matt in Nashville? Woo! Neo is looking very bullish to me. Uh, I think that Neo, or I've seen Neo ride with the market. So if we get, if we get, uh, you know, a big explosion after the Fed to the upside, or you know, momentum is bullish, this is a really fun stock to trade because it has a beautiful thin zone to the upside, and it's great to to play those thin zones because on bullish days like here, we were all trading this and trade the close. You can shoot for this upside in in the uh, volume profile up to about 17 18 and you can make a quick profit regardless of it getting there or not it still really moves to the upside with this thin zone it keeps trying to get in there i see a nice little bull flag here i'd say long term you see neo at uh, at finally getting to that 17 level uh john c in cape cod is looking at BPT. Now, John, I know you're saying this one looks bullish. To me, this one looks a little bearish. Uh, we do have a volume profile breakdown. We are seeking to test that value area low. If we do break back into the volume profile, you still have the point of control above you. So you have this resistance at around 14 in BPT. If you're looking to go long-term long in this, you need to get above this point of control because that's going to serve as a big heavy resistance. Also, 
Steve is looking at RNA. RNA gapping higher this morning. Not sure what Avidity Biosciences achieved, but looks like traders are really liking whatever news this is. I would go, I would stay long this if we do maintain being above the point of control. I wouldn't trade this until the end of the day with around the closing bell with my closers at between three and four. Because if this gaps up, but we fly back down through the point of control, then it would be a short. So monitor this one on the volume profile today. Really fantastic moves that this is making. Uh, Mark Sebastian, muted or unmuted, we're going to bring you on right now. Uh, looking at NEO, we talked about BPT, COIN, and kind of stalking RNA to see what it moves it makes at the end of the day. Big money confirming anything? Are the options chain? You know, COIN is a little bit of an interesting one because uh, we mm -hmm. talked about this briefly. Bonds are trading at about 50 cents on the dollar out in 2030. Uh, this thing is already below investment grade. It's about to get downgraded again. Um, they have some real issues. Uh, now that said, if you think they're gonna that this stuff is gonna pass, uh, that we will get through this, that Binance isn't gonna go belly up, uh, there's some opportunities to get some real yield selling selling puts that uh, you're maybe not gonna get from the market. And I'm talking way out of the money. So get this, folks. Uh, the January 2024 seven and a half puts. They're trading a dollar. The, the Coinbase is $38.70. The seven and a half puts are trading about a dollar. You know what the yield is on that over the course of a year? You're, put, you're putting up six and a half bucks to, to um, make a dollar. So you're talking 15% uh, uh, over the next 13 months, um, which is going to end up being a yield of 14% on a put that is $30, $30 out of the money uh, or approximately, what, 80, 85% out of the money. Um, you can get about 10% on, on the five put. So there are some opportunities for savvy investors that do not think that coin is going to go out of, out of business to take advantage of the absolutely insane implied volatility um, on long dated puts. The uh, seven and a half puts are 125% implied volatility. Now, if you think that this whole thing is gonna, gonna go belly up, then that's a bad trade. But uh, just something I was noticing, Coin, these, these long dated puts have an extremely high payout. Uh, and that is because there is some fear. So if you think Coinbase can make it 13 months without going out of business, there's your trade. Interesting, Mark. And like Mark said, because the volatility is so high there, it would make sense to sell because you're collecting that primo.